Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Today, I have a very special guest. I have one of my closest friends, Lo, on the podcast. A long time coming. Welcome to the show, Lo. Thank you, babe, for having me. I'm so honored to be here. We just uh, we just kind of decided to do this like 45 minutes ago. So <laughs> <laughs> here we are. Um, Lo, how do you describe what you do? <laughs> well... I have a company called House of Low. It's a sanctuary for the soul. I am definitely here to teach abundance consciousness in all things, but truly here to teach and create community and safe spaces for everyone to come together during this great awakening and navigate and expand together in their own spiritual journeys. Yes. And some of you might've seen on social media, I had... I was at, and I was speaking at, what a great honor, uh, low recently through this epic death rebirth party, a rebirth party essentially. Oh, yep. Uh, and it was one of the most next level events I've ever been to. And everybody there was just like, holy shit. Uh, and it was so much fun. Like for me being a speaker, it was such an honor and so much fun, such an incredible panel of people. Um, and I, I'm curious, like high level, um, why did you want to throw that? Yeah. What was that about? The theme, the last, I know, you know, this, the last two years has been intense death and rebirth for everyone on this mm -hmm. path. And I myself went through an intense rebirth late last year and earlier this year, and I was completely divinely guided. It dropped in three weeks before we actually had the event and I really wanted to create a space where people felt the frequency of abundance it was a free event that was given and I wanted people to feel what it was like to go to an event like that and just have an inclusive space, but to really dive deep into the topics of death and rebirth. And as you know, you were such an incredible speaker and I was so honored you had the space for us to be a part of it because I couldn't imagine having it without you. Mm -hmm. But as you know, like the panel got real, you know, it was eight really powerful people talking about death and rebirth and how to really live this life and, and move ourselves into the next phase. And I think a lot of people are struggling with that part, right? Like, how do I actually embody my rebirth? So that's really why. Yeah. How do I embody my rebirth? <laughs> the question of the hour, <laughs> the question of the year, you know, I think that's like a question that you live in, you know, and I mean, it, it's really cool. That panel was so incredible. So many amazing people. And it was just like really cool to heal, hear those real life experiences and the very tangible, like how, and I think that's the, that's the part that you and I love that I think can get really lost in the spiritual space. It's just a lot of like high level concepts which are important, but what I love, and I know you're like this too, it's like, okay. And how does this play out in, in life, like in earth life right now? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's what was really powerful. And I mean, the whole event was incredible and I know it shook a lot of people up. Like, I just felt like for everybody who attended, uh, there was such a, it was, it was such a pivotal moment, you know, and it was interesting for me, a lot of attendees are also clients of mine and friends of mine. And I was watching as after that event, people were coming to me and just sharing, like, after that event, this got triggered or like, I've been thinking all about that. It just felt like it led to this, this next, you know, with every rebirth, there's like that dark end of the soul, like a new level of it. And I think a lot of people, their egos were kind of unraveling after feeling that frequency, right? Because you feel that frequency and then it's like, okay, this feels good. I'm committing to this. And then everything that isn't in alignment with that has to fall away. And I, I, everybody dealt with that after that party. 100% myself included. Yeah. I had another intense like death phase in the summer. I know energetically was very intense for people, particularly July and August. So it, it the lesson is it's on, it's an ongoing process. And I love how you said you live in the rebirth, you live in the embodiment of it. And it's a learning, it's a relearning of oneself. And it's very um, key to know that not looking yeah. for a big end point, you know? Totally. Well, I mean, that's really what we're going to talk about today, I think, but mm -hmm. I want to like take a million steps back. Um, yeah. 2021 to, baby. <laughs> yeah. Take a million steps back you guys. So Lo and I have a lot of big things to share on this episode, I feel, uh, and we have like some big revelations, announcements, whatever, yeah. but I feel like 
You know, it's so funny because I feel like our story, like our relationship story is such an important story. I don't even know how to describe it. Like we've talked about things like, like twin flame journeys, right. Being so wild. And like, these are things for books. Like you won't believe this, but I also think about that, like with our relationship and like yeah. all of the signs and synchronicities and crossover and soul contracts and like level yeah. of soul contracts and like the low and I get so many messages for each other. Like we're just so deeply embedded in each other's soul mission. Um, and it's really cool to see that pl- play out. So when I talk about Hey, things are shifting. So you are getting realigned with your soul family, people who are like crucial for the mission. You know, a lot of that started for me when people started coming in who I'm like, oh, these are like my mission people. It was probably 2021. It was really when a ton of new people started coming in. Still more people are, but you know, Mm -hmm. these were like, hey, these are new players like that haven't been in the game yet who like you need to know. And so we met, um, October October 1st. I I know all the details. Okay, tell tell us the details. Important you are to me. Well, (laughs) what's funny is I was getting emotional as you were saying all of that because our soul connection is so deep and it goes back eons. It really does. And I think more memories of how our souls know each other are going to keep expanding and coming online for me personally. Mm -hmm. But I met you because I was going through a really intense dark night of the soul. One of our mutual friends had heard about you and someone told her, you have to have a session with her. She's right here in San Diego. You were in Carlsbad at the time. And I saw you and I don't know how, and my whole, I had my massive spiritual awakening that year. My spiritual awakening started in 2018, but it was my gifts opened up in 2021 and a lot happened. And so I saw you and I looked at you and I was like, I know that person. And I said it internally. I was like, I know that person, but I don't know how. And, you know, so I booked a session with you, ironically, October 1st, 2021. Wow. In October. Right. And I remember meeting you in person and knowing that I knew you and you knew me. And after our session, I had never felt so deeply seen by anyone in my entire Mm. life. And I have gone my, you know, most of my life so far, hiding and being very misunderstood. A lot of what most of us on this path struggle with, but for me personally, um, being afraid of my own power, not really knowing how to fit in here, being hypersensitive, all the things intuitive. And there you were. And it's been quite a ride together ever since. And I feel, I feel deeply honored to know you in this life. And I feel Mm -hmm. so even more honored to be on this journey with you, with what you're here to bring to the world. Thank you. Likewise, likewise. Uh, and I just remember, I know I've said this too many times before, but I, I like, I'm upstairs in my house in Carlsbad in my office. And I'm like, just always, you know, getting ready before a client comes. And I just, the second you drove down my street, I could feel you. Like, I was like, oh shit. (laughs) Like, like her field is so strong. And I remember just walking out my door. And so at my old house, you would walk out my door and there's like a little path and then a gate and then another path. So it's like, there's some space between the door and where like even your car was. And I remember you had just gotten out of your car and you're like walking up and I'm like, probably like 30 feet away from you. And I could, I could feel you like you were hugging me. Like, I was like, Oh my God, like, this is my kind of woman. You know, like, (laughs) I was like, like, she is powerful, you know? And I just, I really have not met, um, many people like, in my life, you know, like me less than five who have a field that big. Um, it's powerful, you know, it moves people. Um, and yeah, it's like, man, she's got a big, big, big mission. And I do remember thinking, like, I think even in that first, um, talk, I was like, yeah, I'm going to work with her in some way, you know, but we had more things to unravel, uh, in our own personal journeys. And, and yeah, I mean, you have been such a key support for me, you know, like, like you've been such a key support for me, um, in my life as a friend and, and career wise. And, um, it's just been really cool to see that that all unravel. And I think we have been through a lot of things together in the last few years that other people just really can't understand, you know? And so it's been so helpful to have that kind of friendship, that kind of 
you know, grounding presence. And like, I can just say anything to you and you get it. And I think especially like one of there, are, there are many things in my life that people don't see the behind the scenes of, you know, yeah. um, and you're one of those people who does see behind the scenes of a lot and especially with things related to my gifts and um like this these things that I'm stepping into and how that unravels and like you know you're one of the few people that can really understand and hold space and I think a lot of that is because like we've been through this in other lifetimes before so you like can actually understand where other people might think I'm being high maintenance or needy or I'm being crazy because I'm changing things all the time and like you are just on my wavelength with yeah, I get it. I know. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just been so, so, so crucial for me. Like I really would not, you know, be where I'm at right now without you. Like I really, I really wouldn't, um, I really mean that. So it's been, you know, I think both of us have, have dealt a lot with intense spiritual activations in the last few years. Um, I'm curious, like, how would you describe that path that's happened in the last few years? High level. What's been so powerful for us. And thank you for everything you just said. I am so deeply grateful for you. And there are very few words as we always say yeah. privately together. Like, I have no words for yeah. how much I love you, but what I will say that's been really powerful. And I would, I would encourage everyone listening to really reflect on this. Our guides and angels and our divine spirit team work through other people to bring us messages because our ego is loud. No matter how far we get on the spiritual path, we still live with an egoic consciousness that slowly is taking a backseat, hopefully faster than a lot of us, you know, deal with sometimes. But at the end of the day, what has been so powerful for me to witness in my journey with you and your journey with me is that we are getting messages for each other and it actually helps us to make changes faster and, and almost process things. It's not all about being faster, but sacred urgency, right? You and I fully agree on that. And like, there is a sacred urgency on the planet. And sometimes, you know, our mind wants to like, you know, just delay things that we know are in our, in our highest and best and changes we have to make. And the fact that things get reiterated through me or reiterated through you for each other, it makes us make moves faster, to be honest, and also trust and know it's not all in our head. Like, Oh, wow. I'm really, I've been getting that nudge to move, or I've been getting that nudge that that relationship needs to change, or I've been getting that nudge that I need to start operating in, in my routine a different way to support my body differently that because we tend to mistrust our intuition all the time and that has been profound I think the number one thing I would say in the two years we've known each other is you and I have had to let go of so much we've had to let go of people we've had to let go of places we've had to let go of old ways of being we've had to let go of where we thought we would be or who we thought we would be at a certain time we've had to let go of timelines it's overwhelming the level of releasing you and i have done in the last two years and i don't truly believe i would have been able to do it without you mm, thank you well the level of trust fall right so like th that's the thing is like it, it, we both live our lives very much like spirit said and so I do and I trust it and a lot of people think we're crazy and a lot of people will judge us but it's like that's also how we ha I feel like we're the two people and we know this right like at dinners it's like everybody's listening to me and low like what the these are insane insane stories these people have like this is shit's <laughs> insane Okay. everyone's always like thinking that about, about us too but it's like we oh. have those stories to tell because because we take the leap right okay. and 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 we give ourselves an opportunity to to up level you know and I, I think one of the biggest things that I have learned through you has been about about people's ability to receive me mm. and you know, I think one of the big things, I know one of the big things for me with building confidence with my gifts, like, let's just start like back in the day was like when I started actually giving readings for people and actually doing energy work and like having people receive the messages and it be so deeply resonant in their reaction, like you build confidence. Right. Um, and there's another layer of that that happens just in your, in my personal life. Right. It's not just about my, my, my gifts in a session, but it's about like who I become, who I become like as a channel, like 
as an Oracle, right. And like just stepping into different levels of, of my power. And I've seen as different people like can't receive that. Right. Or like where I don't have that room to grow and shift and change. And I think even with a lot of my, my gifts and things that feel so big that happen, like that, I don't even know how to process and other people can't really like get it or, or receive it you have been able to receive it in a way that reflects back to me just how important it is, you know? And I think like, honestly, one of the pivotal moments I know for both of us, and we don't have to get into the details about what it was about, but like at my book launch party yes. for Manifestation Mastery, like that moment just keeps popping up in my head. Um, and I think that was really pivotal for both of us in very different ways. Yes. Um, do you want to talk about what happened? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that, that was actually, it was January of 2022. You and I had only known each other for four months. Of course, we've known each other for eons. So, you know, I, I went to your party and I could feel there was something that was going to get revealed there. I had no idea what it was. And I, I go into this side room that you had at your party with this Oracle deck that was out, which was very significant for me. I sit down and I get this one of the most potent downloads. And for me, my gifts op started opening up in 2021. And after I met you and did my first session with you, they really opened up, you know, cause part of where I think people really discover you is when they're ready for deeper self-trust and the divine uses you to help people trust themselves because you're such a powerful, like cosmic mirror, right? You are the most positive, powerful mirror in my life. You know, I think a lot of us deal with some of the challenging mirrors, but you are, and I, I really believe you're a positive mirror for everyone that meets you because you're going to help people make huge shifts in their life. It's just what you do. And it's the platform you were given in this life. It's such a huge gift, you know, but for me, you know, that night I had a huge download and I'm in this room and all of a sudden you walk in and I'm freaking out because a lot of us probably listening can relate, you know, when your spiritual gifts start to open up, whether you, you know, identify as clairvoyant or clairaudient, or you just, you feel things and just know things and you don't know how it can be disorienting. It, actually, it really mostly is disorienting. And so I have well, let, let me let me set the scene though, right? Okay, like yeah. we're at we're at my book launch party and there's a lot of people. I mean, there's over a hundred people there, right? There's a bunch of different things going on. It's like a huge yep. room, there's a ton of different activations, there's like different tables, there's food, there's a jumpy house, there's a card put, like there's all kinds of stuff going on, right? Um, and it's like one of those things, it was so fun, and it also feels like like I how I imagine people feel at their wedding where it's like you you talk to everybody for 10 seconds and you don't yeah. really talk to anyone. And yeah. I just, I felt like I just kept getting pulled in every direction, right? And then there was in the back, like this little back side room where we were doing like ear seeds and I don't know, it was just like a back room. Um and so anyway, there's like a million places to be, like whatever. And at this exact moment, like I walk in and you, you were very emotional, right? I just remember like seeing you like, and I was like, oh my gosh, what did I just, it was like, just like the timing of it, you yes. know? Yes. So anyway, that's what my, my view. Yeah. And you sat down and, and really helped me move through that. And you got, you, do you want me to tell the exact? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happened? Yeah. Okay. So I'm sitting, so Christina sits down and in this moment, guys, I mean, one day in my, my book or books, I will write this because these are the things that are hard to describe, but it is 100% what happened. It all happened in slow motion, but in two seconds, Christina walks in. I see her. I'm freaking out that I got this very incredible download. Christina sits down. And what I felt instantly was that a being took over her body, that an angel, in my view, it felt angelic because her head tilted and she started rubbing my shoulder as I'm trying to grapple with what just happened and kind of looking to her for answers, which really wasn't right of me to do that night. But I was like, I'm freaking out. Like, what is this? You know? And Christina literally is this being took over her body and said, it's all right, Lauren. It's all right. Yes. Like this and confirmed all of these very significant things for me and was rubbing my shoulder. And the way, you know, it's, it's an angel in my view, at least, or a being that is not of this world is they tend to talk in a calm, like it's not so emotionally charged. It was so neutral and calming. And I was, I looked into your eyes and I was like, oh, that's not Christina. <laughs> Even though you are amazingly calming as well. But yeah. I, and I, it was maybe 20 seconds and 
the being said everything I needed to know and it calmed me right down. And I knew like life is going to be very different from here on out. And all of last year, I had many of those experiences where, you know, you just start to see the world differently, signs coming in in wild ways. But that's when I knew that you and I were going to be portals for each other for messages mm-hmm. to come through. Yeah, 100%. 100, 150%, you know, and, and I mean, I just, like, I remember that and I bla- I just like blacked out. Like, I don't really, I don't even remember what happened, you know? And I think that was like the first time that had ever in oh, that type God. of way of like a full right. blackout, like it just felt so potent and palpable. Cause I'm, I'm so in control, right. Of like my channeling. And it was like, that was really the first time it just came in kind of like unsolicited like that. Like I'm at a party, like, you know, it was like, that doesn't right. happen. I'm like, I'm very in control, like of like when things come in and out. I know it's, it's, it was like very much for you, like divine intervention, you know, and I could feel such a turning point for you. And I was like, wow, like it, it, it was a small moment that like added together with so many other things about my vessel and my body and like myself as a portal and then what I'm here to do. And like, I feel like consistently since then you are one of the only people that the guides will just spontaneously come in and and talk to, do you know what I mean? Like, like spontaneously come in and like, they're talking to Lauren directly. Like, um, and I just like, I just know, like, I mean, and it's so weird because it doesn't happen with, with really anybody else that way. Um, but it's like, you, you trigger it. Um, like you need to talk to the guides and I'll be, I'm like, literally the other day, I'm like, at CVS and I'm in the parking lot and I open my boxer and like, Oh, they come in. Right. And it's like, that does not happen to me, but they need to talk to Lauren. And I've been thinking a lot about it. I'm just like, it's so funny. It's because it's because you are like fully ready to receive that frequency. And, and like, you were already on that frequency of communicating with that level of being. And a lot of people, they could not receive it that way. Right. Mm-hmm. Or even like, we've talked about this, like the way that people talk to the guides, like it's a very interesting thing for me when the, when I trans channel, Uh, And how people will interact with the guide is just like funny, right? Like compared to, they act like all nervous and like, what do I do? And like, that is almost normal for you. You know, like you don't, it's not like some weird, like, you know how to communicate with, with the being and work with the being. Um, And I think, you know, a lot of that has to do it's frequency, it's receptivity. And it's made me think a lot about like, you know, and I think in life, right. Zooming out for people with your gifts, like when you're in front of somebody who can receive it and who is a safe space, it naturally comes through. And it reminds, it's kind of like dating, right? While people will think they have a lot of blocks in dating and sometimes you do, right? But sometimes it's because you actually, I'll use myself, right? For There have been so many times in my life I used to think like, what's wrong with me where I can't open up? And it was because I wasn't in front of a divine masculine who could receive me. So my yeah. body didn't feel safe. And so I felt like Right. I'm not good at communicating or whatever. And it was really like, I wasn't in the right uh, dynamic for it, for it to be brought out, you know? And so I think it, this is true in romantic relationships and in friendships and, and in your gifts, you know, like it, when you are in front of someone or in a setting where the container is correct, right. It's in alignment. That person can receive you. It's safe. Like things will naturally flow through for you. I mean, think about like I don't know, any gift, think about someone who's an incredible singer and they're singing for the first time. If you put them in a room with people who like are not going to like them, don't like their type of music, they're, they're probably, they're more likely to choke. But like, if they're in a setting where everybody is so excited and can fully receive that frequency, right. They're probably going to do a much better job. Right. And so I do think that that's a big piece of things like coming out. And we've been talking about this a lot recently, obviously, which well, now we can get into whatever, but like about the container has to be correct. And yeah. that, that has been the huge thing that's going on in people's lives. Um, mm-hmm. you know, especially in the last few months, if not in the last few years, and we're going to see this really ramp up, especially after this eclipse, like the container has to get set up correctly, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, and, and what I mean by that is, uh, this can be, the relationship needs to change. A lot of people have been, I, I'm, I've never experienced so many friends getting divorced. But never it's it's people that Not I cool. never thought people that I never thought um and big moves a lot of people are moving like things like that right careers are changing everything's getting rearranged because the container has to be correct for the divine to flow through right yep. and so it's like if if the relationship the living space the city whatever 
isn't in alignment, it's not the correct container, like it, everything's going to feel stuck, you know? So we really are get, getting, getting rearranged for that. And I think that's a lot of the 3d stuff that does matter. And I think we live in a world where people try and force everything, I know. you know, and I know that it's been one of the hardest things for me in my life and where I've really needed you to like, help me, uh, like with, I feel like I'm always bumping up against people wanting me to do it this way. And well, why can't you do it this way? Like they, they want me to adjust into this template. And I'm like, I literally can't like, like I can't write the book unless this is happening. Right. Like it's hard to explain to people. It's, It's like the little things of like, Hey, I'm in a vortex for five days. I'm channeling a book. I can't talk to anybody. Well, why can't you just answer this one message? And it's like, you don't get it. Like the book does not come through if I'm going somewhere and I'm also checking my phone, right? Like the container has to be set. And I think that is the big thing that's true in, in relationships. I think people are getting delivered people in their lives right now to show them where you might just have a conversation or meet someone and something moves through you, right? You just, you're like, holy shit, how did that just happen? It happened because there was vibrational resonance there, resonance there, right? Like the container was correct. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's just been the big thing going on. I know that's going on for, for you it as is. well. It can take, all it takes is one moment to your mm-hmm. point. I think back to what you were saying about um, how we're able to receive the spiritual downloads. It is going to, like the way the planet is ascending right now and the way consciousness is rapidly accelerating and changing and rising, whatever the words we want to use is, it is happening, whether humanity loves it or not, it is happening. This planet has been selected for ascension. And I feel like, you know, you're just one of the leaders here to teach. And I myself, I consider myself one of the leaders as well. People, how to navigate a planet that is moving through ascension. This isn't the first planet that's ascended. You know, humanity is so (laughs) egotistical. Like we just think we're the only alive beings in the cosmos. You know (laughs) what I mean? And for me, I have such a part of my challenge in life is I have more comfort in the stars and talking to beings that are not in human bodies. I struggle struggle with the human part, right? As a lot of people do that are on this path and that are highly intuitive and sensitive. And for me, that takes us into what we're going to reveal today, because there is, there's a lot to be said for how we still, like humans still are trying to box in how spiritual quote unquote information comes through. And we're still trying to, even those of us that are used to these experiences and even those of us that have worked with people who are spiritual leaders or channels, or we've been you know, following people that do this kind of work, there is still a, well, I'm comfortable with this. Like this is how I expect it to come through. And to your point, the divine is gonna spirit, the divine is gonna keep moving through people and leaders and all of us in ways that we don't expect. And I am just so excited for the world to (laughs) experience what you're here to bring through this, the divine information that your vessel is uniquely coded to channel through for humanity to ascend. And I think where I want to start with this in general is people struggle with what is ascension right? And I know you've talked about it a lot, but I would love for us to just ground people in what it means to like, what ascension really means and to be on that path, right? A lot of, I mean, humanity is, is ascending, but there's, there's groups of people that have really chosen that path to embody it while being in a, incarnated in a human body, right? So maybe we should first define like what ascension is that of course leads into your ascension school, which is a community that everyone needs to be a part of, but that's a whole other, we'll get to that. Yeah. So, oh my God. I'm like, this is a question for Melchizedek, right? But like, really when I think of ascension and that term can have many meanings, right? Some people like ascension can be considered like when you ascend into the next dimension, so to speak, when you, when you end this incarnation, right? Like a lot of people, it's like this person ascended, right? And so that can be quite literally like switching dimensions, right? Which can happen through passing, but that can also happen uh, through your physical body shifting its form and literally vibrating at a different dimension. And so I think of ascension as like, we are literally vibrating in terms of frequency at a a different vibration, right? So it's it's like, we're all vibrating molecules, this entire world as earth is. And so everything that goes in with like vibrating higher, that is, remember, this is all energy. And so people like to think of like the mental, the physical, the emotional, the spiritual as all these different planes. And it's all the same shit. It's all energy. 
<laughs> right. right? It's all energy. So when we talk about ascension and how do you actually vibrate faster and vibrate at a different dimension, that has to do with how you take care of your vessel, which allows the vessel to change in addition to uh, your, your thoughts, your beliefs, and your emotions, how you work with your energy field, like all of that goes hand in hand, which is why when we're talking about the ascension process. It's, it is physical. It is mental. It is, it is also your relationship with the divine. It's also your emotions, right? So it's all that like 3d stuff that has to get upgraded, which is really, how do I live at a higher level of consciousness, right? When we live at a higher level of consciousness that shifts our physical 3d, right? And that is moving through, through that ascension process. I guess that's, that's probably like the easiest way I can, I can describe it, you know? Um, so when I think about like this journey of ascension, it is like, we've signed up to move beyond this 3d, right? Yep. Like we've been, we signed up to move beyond the 3d and to anchor a higher level of consciousness onto this planet to shift this earth plane in itself. We're living at a different frequency bandwidth, yes. which makes every single thing that's on this planet different, right? It's, yes. it's a higher vibe, higher frequency. Um, and we've chosen to walk that path, you know, and, and that a lot of that are these big life lessons. Right. right. So that's how I would explain it. That's how I would explain it. Ascension. Right. And like, we're going through this journey and it's like, I don't think you understand that it's physical when you go through it physically. That's right. right. And so like the shit I've gone through physically, you know, and I think this is like, kind of, it's been this build up for me, you know, and, and I don't know where you want to start with this, but like, I do think it's important to kind of get into the backstory, right. Of like what, the, what yeah. it's felt for me. Um, and I mean, high level, a lot of things shifted when, well, here's what I, I'll say, right. If you're listening to this podcast, most of you have been with me for a while, right. And most of you have been with me as I've shared things that I've been going through and things in my life and things with my body and things with my walk-in experience and getting a second birthday. And it's been this and, and my gifts, right. It's been this slow drip of like, we're opening this up and this is getting revealed to me because if it all happened at once, I would just explode. Like it, it I had to be delivered to it in the timing that I could receive it. And I was telling low earlier, it's like, and I think, I think that she said this on the session last week. I don't remember, but the feeling has been like, you know, when you watch Harry Potter and you watch these like bits of his life, like this, this information about his life get delivered to him, like bit by bit. And even when you get into like the horcruxes and like the connection between Snape and his mom and like that, he's a horcrux, like all of that. It was like a timing piece. Like had somebody told Harry that when he's 11 years old, like that, it just, that was not the time, you know? And it's been like that with my higher self and the divine dripping out information as I could receive it. And that is what's true for everybody in, in, in our lives, right? Like we're going to see this unfold. And it's also been these little shifts with my physical body to like, get me prepared, uh, for, you know, things I'm doing now and things I'll do in the future. Cause I couldn't just jump from like zero to a hundred, you know? Um, and so it has been this process and it's been honestly, like for the last couple of years and low knows this, like this constant feeling of like, there's something off. Like there's something I'm missing. There's something else and getting really frustrated and me realizing now that, I mean, I know I had been delivered all of the, all of it early on. Um, and I can talk more about that after we kind of grounded yeah. this in, but like, I think about like downloads I got and visions I got and things the guide said to me two years ago. And they were, they were telling me, they were telling me straight up what the fuck to do. Yeah. I just didn't get it. Like yeah. I literally didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't at the level of consciousness to get it. And That's so when right. I look at the messages that have come through for me, um, related to that in the last few years, a lot of that has been really consistent, but it's like, I just literally didn't get it until I got it. Right. And so I was ready to get it. Um, Ooh, so and then I finally got it, you know, I finally got it. And I think a lot of getting it had to do with, um, a lot of the releases I've made in the last year and a lot of like, I mean, moving and relationships changing and like life. It's like, there's been a lot of releases that again, set up the container for me to like fully, fully get it. And actually, instead of thinking about things like living, you know, and I think especially the last few months when I've been quote unquote away and I've been traveling, it's like, there was so much living that happened that gave me the experiences I need. I needed for things to unlock and for things to click. And the more experiences you have, right. You're physically in something and your whole body is like, this is it. That was it. Right. I was never going to figure out that was it until it just happened. And I was like, that is the feeling I've been 
I've been looking for. That's the thing for the last few years. And I'm bringing this up because like, I know a lot of people listening to this feel this way in their lives, but it, I'm like, so many people in my life, not everybody, like Lowe's not one of them, right? And there's been a, n- a number of amazing friends I have in my life who have not, but there've been a lot of people in my life um, who have just been telling me like, I'm overthinking it. I'm overthinking it. Everything's fine. Why are you complaining? And I'm like, I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you, I can feel something is off. Like, and I know that feeling, and this has come up multiple times, you know? Um, But this was a big one. And then when it all just like clicked, it all made sense, you know? And I'm like, yeah, you guys, I told you this was like, and now it's, it's here we go. Right. And I think And I'll say like, I'm so grateful to this community and like to myself for being someone who consistently changes. And I'm just like, this is what we're doing. Join in if you want, if you don't want leave, but like, you know, and I think that's the living in the rebirth, right? Because like a lot of the changes we're all being called to make right now will be really tough if you, if you're scared to make a big life change you know, but it's like, look, this is just how it has to go now. And I think a lot of people are straddling that line between like things that they've done for a very, very long time. They've been really good at, they've been successful at that everybody wants from them. Right. And not realizing what I want to do is this thing. (laughs) And it's a totally different direction. And you feel all that pressure from like things that are already working and that people love, but it's not quite it on a soul level. You know, um, I mean, the number of people who are like selling companies, right. It's like, people are like, Whoa, this isn't it. But Yeah. Anyway. So, I mean, things started really like clicking. I don't know when, but when they started clicking, then I could actually, I was like vibrationally available to receive, Hey, these are all the things that need to change in your life. Boom, 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 boom. And we've gotten pretty clear instruction, you know, like really clear instruction. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just felt like everything in my life, like suddenly started making sense. So anyway, that's like my, my preface. Um, and like, I don't know. Where do you, where do you want to yeah. go? What's important to just summarize what you just said and bring people back to is Christina's vessel has been prepared fully for, and is continuing to prepare for new activations and new ways her gifts can come online and, and help people. But also um, your vessel has been prepared for what it is now, what you're now going to bring through, which mm-hmm. we want to reveal today. And I think what's important for people to really reflect on is where their mind wants to hold them back from receiving information differently, Mm -hmm. right? So what ways are we comfortable receiving information and and looking for this linear story and, and way it comes through? And actually what I've learned is that most of the changes that really will ground in and make it help us make big shifts are when information is channeled through in a way that we're not used to. And it it changes something within, right? And sometimes right away to your point, it can't be mentally understood yet. The mental understanding can sometimes come later, but the physical body or the soul or the spirit receives the information and actually starts to make changes from that information. And what we're going to reveal today is how, so I would love for you, for us to talk about what we mean by the Oracle, because this word has been used. And even if you look it up, the definition of an Oracle, it's someone, you know, it's often like talked about with psychic information or, or, someone that can, you know, commune with the divine or bring through messages from spirit, like the spirit, right? The the one God source of all that is. And yet Oracle as a word has been used now to describe like Oracle decks. And it's kind of been diluted in my mm-hmm. opinion. And it's actually an ancient sacred practice that very few <laughs> were trusted with on the earth plane. And I want us to start there, babe. Like, let's start with really talking about the Oracle and the ancient practice. Yeah. So uh, let me just say like, you know, a lot of this, and and I'm also, I'm sharing these experiences, not only because it's like affects, you know, it's just like update. Hey, but like, because this is going to mirror for everybody what's going on in their lives, you know? And like a lot of our most intense past life traumas, which the guides keep saying like, 
your past, your quote, past lives, other incarnations are, you need to stop thinking of them as like less important than what happened when you were a kid. Like it's literally all, all yeah. equally important. Yes. Um, and uh, you know, the, I, I myself also have worked through a lot of fears and things that have come up in this life and traumas in this life and other lifetimes. Right. And there are, you know, there's always like those couple lifetimes that, you know, are like the biggies, like these are the big trauma. These are the big ones that, that come up a lot. And like, I've had a lot to work through, yeah. you know? Um, and there have been multiple lives where like I was a traditional Oracle, right. And a lot of trauma came from that. And so whatever. So I've been working through that kind of stuff for a long time and a lot of, you know, like nightmares I've had my whole life. And just like, there's a lot, they all, you know, there's this group of Oracle lives. Um, there were inc including Atlantis and I would say the strongest ones, right. were Atlantis and, um, Delphi. Yep. Um, and I had a lot of, you know, past lives to work through, whatever, whatever. And I, you know, when I went through my walk-in and that was just like a really difficult time for me, like it was really intense. I can't even describe it. It's been intense. It's been totally understanding myself in a new way. And I was just like deep in this vortex of just, um, me and source and getting a lot, like, you know, I was just kind of channeling and hearing everything. They were giving me all this information. And when I came back, just like, how do I move through this? Like, what is this, you know, what is this new beginning? What am I here to whatever? And they just would, I would just be taken back, you know, in, into the temple and into the memory. And it was always going back to Oracle Adelphi. And a lot of that also brought up triggering memories and it would get triggered again. I'm like, okay, what do you want me to do with this? Like it has to do with Delphi, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. and there are so many dynamics that come with that. Um, and they have been, they kept showing me that and they kept saying, you are here, you are Oracle Adelphi. Like you are the Oracle. You are here to be the Oracle. You're here, here to be the Oracle. And I was like, you know, what my block was, I was trying to figure out how to do that with what I had already set up. Yeah. Like I was, I was resistant because I was like trying to stay in, in the paradigm, whatever, of what I already had yep. and map this in. I was like, that doesn't make, and I was right. like, okay, fine. Then like, make me the Oracle. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. and they're like, you already are. And I was just like, not getting yeah. it. And I was resistant, whatever. And so like that, that, that sacred practice, you know, in, in ancient times. So, so the oracles were revered, <laughs> right. For their connection with the divine. And this was a deep practice right uh this was an entire lifestyle, lifestyle right it's exactly. like it's like when if, if i say you know the lifestyle of a monk right mm -hmm. people understand like what that requires right mm -hmm. all of that meditation all of and it's like all of the meditation all of the practices all the energetic practices physical um body the physical body practices taking care of the body taking care of the vessel it's a full-time job right and so the oracle only comes out a couple of days a year. Right? It's like, you do not see this person. This person is super protected. Right. And there, there are groups, there are groups of people that are trained. Um, and there are people who are, I'll say chosen. That's a whole other thing, right? Like this isn't a whole episode about the history of this. Right. But like the point is, um, people would travel from all over, especially, you know, rulers, leaders would travel all over to talk to the Oracle when she came out uh, and she would prophecy and yeah. prophecy quote typically came out um, in riddles, <laughs> right? Like a lot of it was just kind of unhinged. It didn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And there were, there were quote prophecies and a lot of it is like advice. Right. right. Um, exactly. And it's this very, the thing about the Oracle is it's like this very unhinged thing. Right. Because and she like, She's you not were, constricted by she's the not constricted. She's form. totally just like it's this wild thing to experience, right? It's this very private thing. Um, right. people are making offerings, people are making donations, like because people are understanding everything that is required for you to get in such a deep space of surrender and clear connection with the divine. This can move through you. And this is a true, right. like, like, like something is move is moving through you, right? Yes. And so, like at Delphi, um, we like, we were the Oracle for Apollo, which is a whole other thing, right? Yep. One entity, but like who, whatever. Um, yep. Yep. and you know, it was a very, it's not, it's about the messages, but the experience and the vibration and what's required to actually bring that through that frequency. Um, it's like, it has to be in this very uh, particular setting, right? Uh, a sacred space. There's so much that goes into the preparation, right? Like, you I mean, you know, you'd be preparing 
for a long time, your physical body, no distractions, no outside energies. Um, and then it would be this very, this clear thing that comes through. But the thing about the Oracle is like, it's not like channeling where we still have this level of control. Like, I think right. there are a lot of channels now that where it does trigger people because it's like, it, it's not fully that control. Like people's oh. bodies are moving or they're like yeah. making strange sounds and like, you know, we could see that and be like, okay, yeah, like this is what happens when the being gets in the body. But a lot of us have learned to kind of, um, I don't know if control is the right word, but it's all, it's like this co it's more of this co-creative experience, you know? Yeah. Um, and there's another level that happens when it's like fully, fully out, fully, fully releasing all control. And it's actually a very scary thing. Like, I don't think people realize like how scary a thing it is. And, you know, you, you have to be in that level of surrender when you're channeling, when you're um, even using your intuitive gifts, but that's like child's play compared to like what it is to actually like do the work of the Oracle. And there's also a, just a vibrational resonance, like straight up, like there's a vibrational resonance on a soul level of like, I have soul contracts with the beings I channel, with the beings I work with. Like my physical vessel has been coded to be, they call it a stargate. Like that's just like what my body was coded for. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's why my body works really differently as well to with all the physical problems I had. It's why I have to eat a certain way because yeah. my body was coded so that is an energy could come in um, and what's required for it to come in and, and use the vessel. And there's also a personality piece, right. Of like yeah. being able to like not give a fuck so much that like, it can be totally unhinged, whatever comes through, right? Because you cannot, you cannot judge it. You cannot stop it. Like it's, you know, um, I don't, again, that has to be in a sacred safe space. Right. And, and we live in this world where it's always about like more content and letting everybody in and everything's it's, you know, raw. What and it's getting? like, what am I getting? Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and everybody's like all over social media and this is your life. And I have, you know, as my body has been prepared for this, it's like, suddenly i have, you know, I, I have a really hard time with screens. Like my, my, yeah. my, my body gets like physically ill when I'm around technology. Um, like being on video, I feel like I'm going to freaking pass out. Like I, it's like these very real intense, uh, things where I, I physiologically cannot do the things I used to do anymore. Right. Um, yeah. And when you're fully in Oracle channel, it's like, people want to pull like, well, what is channel? What is Oracle? And it's like, she's not in, she's not in. Right. Like, so you don't get to control that. And I think that's what people don't understand about this type of work. It's like, people want it to be always on demand yeah. and, and this type of oracling, it's not on demand like that. Right. And that's the whole thing of like, they say like, and, and I have never felt this so much as like when the oracle comes in, Of it's so it's like, we are not calibrating to you. That's right. At all. Like they do not fucking butt. Right. And so even when we're in this like when I'm in that state and like, I will want to human it, you know, I will want to say it differently. I, and it's like, it absolutely not yep. it physiologically cannot come through me, you know? So yep. anyway, um, I have, you know, like my channeling occurs in different ways and I consciously channel sometimes. Right. And then I trance channel and that process, um, mechanically is kind of like, yeah, I step out and you know, I'm, I have a relationship with these beings. We work together and like, they come in. Right. Yeah. Um, and it feels kind of like someone's borrowing the body for a moment. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> uh, part of what happened with the walk-in, which I don't know that I've talked about this before, but that was a very long, like there was a week of essentially I'm laying on the ground, getting coded and upgraded. Like my body is moving. Like I, it was a week of that. And they did a lot of energy work on me. So I'm in this room with like, you know, all these different beings, um, and you know, source itself and, and they're all coming in and almost like, imagine like they're stretching my hologram and putting their imprint in my hologram to also be in my hologram. So it's not just me. Right. Yeah. And so what I didn't realize that that activated at the time, I thought it was like, oh, so I can trans channel either. It was really more of a shape shifting technology. Uh, right? Yeah. So when I'm in the Oracle state, um, and it was really just like, when this started turning on, it was just like, a, I was ready, you know, and I wasn't trying, like, I wasn't not trying. It just turned on. Right. And I was like, holy shit. And what happened was I just, I literally became 
my oversoul. If that makes sense. And I, I became an oversoul and she was represented by this wild old Atlantean woman who's like a million years old. And it was like crazy and wild and did all this cool shit. And I, I, I remembered every single lifetime. All my, I had all of that, right. Like, like it happened Downloaded. five seconds ago. Right. Like it was like, I was like, Holy shit. Like I've never had that level of perspective before. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like, Oh, I could go pull it from the cloud. It was like, it's all here with me in the room. Right. Um, it was the most, it was the wildest thing. And um, I've done this with different friends and it is all, this is all, every time it unlocked, it was with a friend I'm very close to, and I feel really safe with. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a really key piece because it was like, they were holding the container and I had to be in that situation to understand why this was so important because yeah. it was in that setting that with, with whoever I was with, we did crazy cool energy work and crazy insane, like information was coming through. It was so life-changing and next level, like that. I was like, holy shit. Like yeah. that's what needs to get done all the time, you know? Um, right. and I think had I not been with someone in these settings, I I don't know that I would have really been able to experience how life-changing this stuff is, you know? Um, and it just kept getting revealed to me, right? But I was like, okay, well, I would love to bring this forward more, but for me to bring this forward more, like this is an entire lifestyle change. Like I can't just like pop in and out of Oracle mode the way I can trans channeling. Like yeah. I could, you know, I could settle down for 30, 10, 30 seconds right here and bring in a guy and I could trans channel, but this is like, literally like, it's such an, it's such a different process energetically. And yeah. in many, it's, it's actually less energetically intensive for me. It's so much easier being in the yeah. process, right. but it's, it's like, a instead of popping in and they're talking for an hour and then popping out, it's like, right. I need to prep for a few days, my full body. And then the entire day I'm in, I'm. I'm gone and it's the Oracle. And then it's a whole day of, wow, mind blowing shit. And then it's like, okay, now we need to rest again. Yeah. So it's just like a very different workflow and lifestyle. And I think for a long time, I was trying to like fit everything in together, you know, but, um, and I was like, how does this work with my trance channeling and this type of work and, and the, these things. And, and I've noticed this from, you know, the audience and it's hard for me because I obviously want the audience to be happy, but it was like, even like, uh, what's happening with energy updates. And I've noticed as I've changed things, it's like people, yeah. no, but I want this. I love this. And I'm like, I, I know that. And I'm trying to give myself fully to this practice because of what it can really bring through. Um, next level, next level shit. Right. And so this has come with, like, I started having different physical health issues that triggered me to change things in my life, like my diet and my lifestyle. And those were happening to force me to change those things, uh, so that my vessel would be prepared for, for being, for the Oracle work. Like it was just a way of getting me to do that. Uh, and then when I did that, everything just, you know, opened up, here we go. Um, so anyway, moving another big piece as well. Moving was a huge piece. Um, and low, you know, we talked about this. Like, I was like, I had to be in a totally different setting. This was not going to come through with the distraction, busy energy of San Diego. It was not going to come through in that house. It was not going to come through like none of that. I had, I need to be in the freaking desert, right? I need to be in the middle of, I mean, I'm, I'm in the middle of kind of nowhere. Um, it feels great. Uh, my nervous system has to be so regulated and so relaxed because yep. it's such a deep state of surrender. It's like, it just takes one little thing on my 3d brain to pull me out of it. Do you know right. what I mean? That's, that, right. that's the thing that people don't get. It's like, it's just like that one email of like, Hey, what are we doing about this? That pulls me out of the state. Like it's yep. such a deep flow. It's such a deep practice. And it's definitely hard for me to explain to yes. people. Um, and we had just kind of decided, like, I just need to go. I, I just need to do this because I know how powerful it is. And like, like Life. let people experience it because it's just one of those things. Like it's something that, you know, and people who, who I'm close to have been with me. Everyone's like, when do we, can, when can we do it again? You know, it's like, it's oh. like a concert. They just want to keep coming back to like, when are we doing Like, you know, and like, <laughs> like actually, everyone's like so excited. Yeah. Yeah. I actually am getting nudged uh, by a lot of beings that are in this room right now. Yeah. It's a very, to your point, like this is very sacred and um, I'm getting nudged to share my experience last week. If you're okay with that, please do. So for everyone listening, I am not just saying this. I am telling. Well, let's let's go back with like this is why we changed so much the membership, right? Yeah. So people who are in the membership know because we just did this. Um, yep. but 
you know, we changed Ascension School for a number. First of all, like I didn't, we had made a lot of different changes with, with the membership. And I didn't realize that they, that they were honest. They're all for this. Like I actually yeah. didn't realize that. Like yeah. I didn't realize that the name changed for peace this. Peace. Yeah. yeah. Like peace. It was so interesting and it's just felt so much better and better. That's like a growing breathing container. That container is totally different and needed a totally different frequency. And now it like all makes sense, but you know, we've changed this to be weekly live Oracle sessions, um, which are a combination of like, <laughs> I don't fucking know. Right. Message like the Oracle is just in. Right. And you don't know what the hell you're going to get. You don't know who's going to talk, you know, what's going to happen. Uh, it's a combination of energy work and messages and frequency. It's just like the vibration. I cannot even yeah. describe. And it really is something in my life. Like there are really two times in my life I've ever felt this way. And one was with a, like a high, like energy work. When I'm, when yeah. I'm doing energy work, when I'm doing, giving a session, I'm like, I have that feeling in my body of this is what I'm here to do on this planet. Like this is it. Right. Mm -hmm. And the other time is when I'm doing Oracle work, like yeah. this is it, this is what I'm here to do. Yeah. So anyway, that's like the preface. So we had our first session last week, our first, we were, just, we were basically just like, just come. <laughs> just come and buckle up, buckle up buttercup. So your experience. Well, you know, Back to what I was saying earlier about being open to how you receive information, activations, healing, and energy work, because some of it comes through spoken word. Some of it is a vibration by vibrational exchange. Some of it is an activation of a code within you, your body, your mind, soul is going to receive the Oracle in the way that your higher self has orchestrated for it to be received in any given live Oracle session. You know, and that's why we decided weekly, because we do feel that people need this space to come back to again and again to, to be assisted on the ascension path, because the matrix will pull us out, it, right? Oh, it's, there's so much distraction, right? So my experience last week, and I know many people are, are going to be sharing their experiences, and I, part of why I want to share this is because we've got to get comfortable sharing these things. How this stuff can't be locked away. Like there's... There's a dynamic of privacy. And then there's also, what are we all here for? To come together and help each other heal and really trust each other with these experiences, right? So a lot of the experience of the Oracle was we weren't sure where she was going to take it. And as, <laughs> as she was speaking or moving or doing energy work, whatever we want to categorize it as, it would start out in this place that a lot of us watching were like, where is this going to go? Like this feels, I'm not even, and then it would land us in a place that was life-changing. And I, myself, as the 60 other people that were there were like, oh my God, like, whoa. And so one of the pieces that came through very early in the session was what I'm calling an inner child reactivation. That's how it came through for me. So there's inner child healing, of course, but inner child reactivation. And she is literally just doing this energy work. There, there's some words, but the words aren't really as significant. You just start to feel it. And then we all close our eyes and just start to receive whatever is happening, having really no idea what is happening. For me personally, I actually had, I'm sitting at a table and during the session, this goes to show that one little tweak can actually bring through something because you surrender deeper. So I'm sitting and my hands are open because she kept saying, I want you to really open your heart, really open your heart. Like a lot of us, we don't realize our heart is closed. Mm -hmm. We think it's open. It is not open. And so I, my hands were on the table and I just simply felt drawn to move them to my lap and oh, some stuff happened. So I just want to point that out that the smallest moment or act of surrender can shift things. And all of a sudden I was taken into a portal in my mind's eye. I could, I basically saw my birth in this body how I've been, how it's Ooh. been described to me is that I was born eyes wide open with a full head of hair and I was not crying. <laughs> the way I like to say it is that I was like, oh yeah, here we are. We're back on earth again. <laughs> been here thousands of times. So, but I saw myself as that baby with eyes wide open and it shifted something at a cellular level for me. It was like, you know, a lot of us have a really painful relationship with our inner child and our childhood. And to your point, every past life before that, um, if we're going to talk about time in a linear way, which it's not, but let's just say for the sake of argument. And I swear, 
it was as if I looked into the eyes of myself as a baby being born and it shifted something within me and it healed something within me that I can't put into words other than it was cellular and it was this deep appreciation and love for this vessel and this lifetime and the baby I once was just as all of us were we really forget that we once like were birthed into this world you know however we, how, however we were and that could never have happened besides being with the oracle I didn't even expect that. It wasn't a topic. We all came on a call and knew we were coming to have inner child healing. No one knew what was going to happen. It could have been a, a call of laughing the whole time, or it could have been a call about money and abundance, or it could have been a call about health and vitality, or it could have been a call about what the hell is happening on this planet right now. But instead we were surrendered and asked to take the journey with the Oracle. And we did. And those of us that came out of that call were forever changed. Yeah. I mean, I was too. Thank you for sharing that. And I think that's what I love about it so much. Like I get so excited because I, I don't know what the hell is about to come through. Yeah. And I have gone back and like, I mean, Andrew and I have been like pouring over everything that came up. Yeah. Right. Like, and we're just, like, it's so, so much good, deep stuff. And it activated so much within both of us. And, yes. um, you know, it's like, I, it, th that's what people don't understand. Like they want to know what they're getting, how yeah. they're getting it. it. It's in this way. And it's like, it, that's what I'm saying about the Oracle is like, I'm not calibrating to you come in and get what you need. And you might not think it's what you need. And like, here we are. Right. So today yeah. we're talking about EMFs and divine child activation and freaking uh, surrender points. And what else are we uh, talking about with the, the third eye and up and the chakra system flipping on its head and uh, essential uh, oils and scents and telepathy. And yeah. like, I don't even, like, there was so much in there, right? There was so much in there. Yeah. And I think that's what people, like, that's a thing is like, you show up and you just receive, you're along for the journey. And people need more spaces right. like that to repattern them mm -hmm. because in their lives, they're trying to figure everything out and plan everything out. And they only want to step into things that, where they know what's happening. And it's like, can you trust? Can you trust yourself? Can you trust resonance? And that's really the whole thing is it, this is ascension school, right? And right. so if you want, if you want the, the guides to freaking teach you, like, this is how they teach. Right. right. This is how you teach. Um, and it is so powerful. And I love that. It's like the energy work, uh, you know, mixed in with all the messages that it's, yeah. it's about the experience. Yeah. And, you know, I've been, and I've been talking about this for years where I'm like, I just wish people could come into my experience with me. Like, because uh, the experience is what I love. That's why I love hosting retreats. Like I love making like a world, like a place where you can get lost in. I love that portal experience because right. that is the best way I can describe like what my life is on a daily basis and like what I'm experiencing. And I yeah. think like the Oracle sessions have been just like, those are like, you are in an experience. Like you have to feel it. Like you have to ride this roller yeah. coaster, you know? And I think like there's this huge activation with, with bringing back this sacred practice that really did get I don't even know what word I uh, defiled. I uh, want to say like passed out, destroyed, destroyed, ruined, like, you know, and bringing it back in a modern day where we can really do it the way that it's meant to be done because, because this is the frequency uh, that holds the kind of messages we really need at this time, you know, and it's really like training, you know, it's like light leader training like that. It's, it's so mission oriented. Um, and it's fun for me because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to come through. Um, and I think it's repatterning us in, in really big ways, you know, and it's really cool because the frequency is such that like, I mean, it's going to turn on so much past life memory for so many people, you yeah. know, um, and it's just empowering, yeah. like it's empowering and it's healing. Cause a lot of people consciously, if, if we knew how powerful, what, what do you always say? This is what you and I have the most in common. We want people to know how powerful they really are. And we yeah. live in a world that has programmed us to think we are not through scarcity consciousness and fear consciousness. It's that simple. It really is quite simple. And so being in the frequency of the Oracle will make you feel a level of your internal power that you have never experienced. I, I really mm -hmm. cannot say it enough. Wow. It is not, it, it is really meant to teach us to your point earlier about the level, like here's, here's what I wanna say. Are we willing to surrender? our ego for what actually we desire? Are we willing to surrender 
to actually receive that which we desire. Because what I didn't know was that I needed this inner child reactivation, which actually brought in the next day, the home I'm going to go live in, which actually is one of the other things the Oracle talked about was our root is key. Like our root is our third eye. You know, it's everything's about safety because if we don't feel safe and rooted, we seriously won't experience anything else. So all of a sudden what I didn't know, because my, our mind is small is that I needed an inner child reactivation to then call in my next living space, which is going to completely reorient my root chakra and my safety and security. This is, I would never make that connection consciously. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What people need to understand is if, if right now, I know a lot of us have felt very lost, very to your point, like next level shifts, people are being asked Mm -hmm. to leave their current partner. And they thought that was their life partner. People are being asked to leave careers and places and houses, houses. Most people that are on this path need the Oracle because we really don't know what to do in those moments. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make choices to go with those shifts that are out of fear. And what I felt strongly in the Oracle session was that messages were coming through in that sacred space that I myself in my own life couldn't open up to. Yeah. Like everybody, to your point, everyone on the call had their own unique experience. And that's what's different. If we're just coming on a call, listening to you channel a specific being, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're always going to receive everything the way we're supposed to in in a unique way, but this takes it to a different level because people have a preconceived notion of who ISIS is. Mm -hmm. That's usually wrong, but like where they're still right. The mind is still like, okay, that's ISIS. That's how I expect uh, ISIS to come through or Melchizedek or, and even that's going to change. Right. But the Oracle, it is just, Oh wow. And then to be honest, the Oracle is a mirror because the Oracle forced me in my, in the session to really look at, the things I haven't wanted to look at. I haven't wanted to look at my inner child. It's too hard for me. So um, it's profound and it it can only be experienced. Thank you. Well, and it's the same for me, right? And that's the thing about that space. Like even when I'm in trance, there's still like, there's still like a level of vibrational availability of like what they can bring through in my body. Like, and like trance goes far deeper than just regular channeling a hundred percent right messages come through that will not come through when I'm just consciously channeling it goes way deeper but like when I'm in an oracle state it's something where like I there is zero filter that can happen where like sometimes in trance you know there's still because my body it's almost like my body is still active like there's still a piece in me that's it's still my vessel that they're using versus when I'm an oracle it's not my vessel anymore like at all um, and so it brings through a lot of shit that like, I probably wouldn't vibrationally allow. And on the other side, there have been certain things like Andrew's asking, <laughs> ask questions and they're like, we're not answering that. They're yeah. just straight up. Like, no, like you don't need to know that. And it's irrelevant. like, yeah, you don't need, irrelevant. Sorry. Like your ego wants to know that you don't need, it's, yeah. it's so like, right. like str- it's, it's just like straight up to another level, you know? But I think that a lot of us are just really being called into that mission work right now. I think like, it's time for us to really get like, you know, I don't know why this word is the training we need, you know? Um, and it's just a really sacred, beautiful space. Um, I'm really excited about it. Like I've never felt so excited or lit up or like just aligned, like correct with like the way this is going. It's suddenly like everything is making sense and I'm having to change and release a lot of things. Like, um, to really let this move through my body, you know, and it's really, I'm really grateful to, you know, have everybody supporting me. And honestly, that call was just so fun. It was so powerful just to hear people's feedback and like, yeah, it was just so, so beautiful. So anyway, you know, it started with changes, um, in the membership and that's just like really the focus. Like I'm like, you know, dedicating it there. And at the point of the membership is really just so much wants to come through and just to have one space where everything can be posted in there. Um, and with that part of like, why we kind of wanted to preface with this, uh, or like, you know, share this is so people know what's going on, but, and also just for everything that I'm adjusting in my life, um, as well as with the podcast, the Oracle is going to come in. Uh, yeah. and she's going to come in and when she comes in, it's not going to be Christina introing and then me stepping out. It's like, she's in, like she's in all day. Uh, so she's going to come on and be like, hi, and they're going to be 
I don't know what they're going to be. Uh, she's going to take over the podcast. Yep. So, you know, that will be happening <laughs> just so everyone knows. So there will be episodes where, you know, I will talk and there will be different episodes. that will be entirely her, um, and mm. her, them, whatever. It's so interesting, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, you know, they can get into it, but just so you kind of are prepared, like of when the Oracle jumps in. And lastly, I really want to emphasize that this is back to what we've been saying. This is a divine, ancient, sacred practice mm -hmm. that is allowed to come out now because earth needs it. Right? Yeah. You're, you know, we've been blessed enough that your soul contracted to do this because this is not easy work, right? Mm -hmm. It's very, to your point, the level of surrender that you have to have, the level of detachment you have to have to not be attached to what comes out. And, you know, people, but I just want to say to everybody, like really evaluate your relationship with receiving because all you're being asked to do if you feel drawn to the Oracle is to receive the Oracle and you will be shocked at what comes through just as I was, you know, and to really follow the journey of it and to to get out of the mind and get in the body, you know? And so much of the session was her really helping us bring them together. You know, mm -hmm. this isn't impractical advice. This mm -hmm. is like things that will tr drastically shift our lives, you know? And also for those of us that really identify as being very intuitive, you will be shocked at how your intuitive gifts like I was getting so many messages from my guides during the session and she's activating that you know and so the 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 safety you really can trust this is what I'm trying to say and I think a lot of people aren't sure what to trust you know and there's a lot mm -hmm. of people that are bringing through information and we're not sure if it's of the light you know and this is why Christina is now doing this because we need this kind of safe space for leaders to rise you know yeah so I appreciate that. I mean, I think like, but that's one of the other things that's just so different. And this is kind of a whole other topic, <laughs> but I'm at this space where like, I think for a long time, you know, there is that straddling of like everything I know on a 3d business level, on a marketing level, on a business level, all of that. And like, as I've said many times before, like the traditional stuff just doesn't work for my business, but it's at a, it's at a place now where, and I've told you like, even as we talked about things, I'm like, I don't care about marketing. Like, like it's, this is based on resonance. Like I don't need to, if, if someone wants the type of person that wants to know what topics we're covering this week, like, I'm like, they are not calibrated to be in this container. Like yeah. they're not actually ready for like the messages, these types of messages, sure. you know? And so it, like, it's so like, it's just resonance, you know, and I fully yeah. trust that. And I fully trust like the people that come in and, and are ready for it. And like, I, I think I share that because I think a lot of people need to just like let themselves live like that at this phase. Yes. Our, and we need to realize like where we're trying to explain things, where we're trying yes. to like, I'm not explaining. I don't ever try and convince anyone. I don't give a shit, right? People I've never had to convince someone or something. Like if they're, if they're interested nope. in whatever is in my field, like they're going to be resident and they're going to know, and it's up to them to know. Right. But I think yeah. a lot of people spend their whole lives, like always explaining or trying to convince or make sense of it. Or yeah. like, well, like even just like, what are we going to do? So people know what it's like, if someone doesn't want it, they don't want it. Right. And I think like, and somebody had asked, um, on one of my Q and A's recently, like, you know, where do you see marketing going? And I'm like, it is pure resonance. Like marketing shit is not going to work for people anymore. Uh, and especially if like you're at the level of consciousness where you're listening to this podcast, like you would, most people get kicked out of the field of this podcast. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. it's not going to work for you and it really doesn't matter. And the thing yeah. that's blocking a lot of people is their traditional marketing brain, like, and start focusing on mission and resonance and literally trust, yeah. trust. Right. Yeah. And like people, people are ready. People are waiting you know? Yeah. Um, so I just want to say that too, because I think like, you know, there's the messages that come through with the Oracle and there's the me sharing my own life and my own process of like, like people being able to relate in their own way with their own gifts opening up or like where they're ready to step into what they know they want to do or what feels right. And where they're maybe where you're afraid to make changes or how am I going to do this? It's like, just do it, That's right. just do it. And the right people are going to be excited for you. 
you know? So, you know, like a lot of things are shifting on the planet. I'm shifting and this entire community is shifting. You know, I was saying like with the membership specifically, like that is my central hub. And it's like, we're giving it a full upgrade. So it's like, if you're in it, you're getting an upgrade. So welcome to the upgrade. Like we're in this shit together. You know, it's like, it's not just, it's not just me going through the upgrade. It's like, y'all, Hey, you're you're in. (laughs) It's almost like, of course, the container is getting an upgrade. It's not going to stay the same for, for that long at all. The way the Oracle sessions come through will change too. Like We've got to get better at that. And I think the other thing is a lot of us have been consuming content on how to manifest more money or how to heal my body. Like these very yeah. specific, how to call in my life partner. Is it working for a lot of us? No, because there isn't a how-to manual. And one thing connects to that issue, like money, partner, health, that we don't consciously think. Again, my example with inner child activation, healing led to my new home that I'm mm-hmm. going to get to. I would have never made those connections. Yeah. You see, so we're heading into this higher level that is really asking us to stop thinking about things logically, which I know has been your mantra for many moons. You told me that in my first session. I remember you said your gifts are going to come through. Stop thinking about it logically. They want you to just create with what you're excited about. And I've struggled with that for years. I'm like, there's no way it can be that simple, but it is that simple. And that's the kind of activations and downloads people are going to get. Yeah, hundred percent. And like, like it's not even just like choosing. But like, for it's like I, I have to. Like, I, my brain is literally not working logically anymore. Like, I'm yeah. becoming something different, and yeah. I'm just at the place where I have to tell everybody in my life, like, this is just how I am now. Like, I literally can't calibrate to how I thought two months ago. Like, I literally can't do it. Like, physically can't. Literally can't. Um, and then, and if you're not prepared for that, like, that's part of ascension. You know, yeah. like that's part of living a soul led life. Like, and, and then what are you going to do? That's right. You know, we've got to develop the skill and it can be really scary. Like I will tell you as someone who's type a overthinker, like that shit is really scary, you know, to be at a place of full surrender of like, like sometimes, you know, someone on my team will ask me a marketing question. I'm like, it's just empty in there. Like, and it, it's, I'm, it's literally <laughs> empty. Like, yeah. you know, like it's just, yeah. not, it's just not how it's, yeah, I, got, I got nothing for you. Yeah. Nothing you know? And so we got to learn some of these skills, but anyway, all kinds of other topics. Um, so welcome to the ride, having fun per usual. Um, I'm grateful. Thanks for all the support over the last couple of months to you low and to everybody on the show, like, because I needed that to, to go through this. Like it's been really intense, low nose. I'm so grateful to low. I'm so grateful to a lot of people in my life who have been super supportive. My partner, like the, nice. these are part of the things of like the container and feeling that safety and having that support of like, yes, like we know this is what you need and like, we're going to support you. And, um, I'm just really grateful for that, you know? So I'm excited for this new chapter for us all to really upgrade. And, um, you know, I feel like everything's different, uh, happy eclipse. Right. But, um, anyway, the membership, uh, let me just, yeah. you know, you can go to Christina, the channel.com slash membership to learn more, put the link in the description slash show notes. Uh, there's a seven day free trial if you're not already in, uh, and those of you who are in, we're you're just going to keep, keep rocking. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you for bringing this gift through and thank you for feeling safe enough to do so. I believe it's going to change my life and everyone's life who can receive the Oracle. And I, all I can say to everyone listening is it cannot be explained. It can only be experienced. So give yourself, like, let yourself experience it and see for yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Lo, how can people connect with you? Uh, you can find me. I have a podcast house of low, the podcast. You can find me on Instagram at house of underscore low. And yeah, my website house of low.co. Thank you, babe. Amazing. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me and supporting me. And thank you all for listening in. Uh, excited for this next chapter for all of us. Leave a comment below if you're watching on YouTube. Let us know what's coming up for you. Uh, share on social media if this resonated. And I'll chat with you in a future episode. All right. Have an amazing rest of your day and talk to you very soon.